The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. This is the Wednesday edition. This is the 16th of April. And uh, my pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon on market days. Markets closed on Friday. And I will be doing Larry's show today as well. So it's a two-hour show that I'm going to be doing, and I will be taking tomorrow off. So um, this will be the last show until Monday. Uh, at least to the next two hours will be the last until Monday. So let's go through a number of uh, of the characteristics of the market that we're looking at. That one-to-one -one extension that I was talking about has produced – Wow, it's not quite a 50%, but that is a pretty darn good retracement. Oops, that's the wrong one right there. I'm showing the E-mini. Uh, this is the left chart here. You see those two blue lines? Let me just make it a little bit bolder. Look at that. Two blue lines from 1892 down to 1830. That's A to B. And then you go C to D, took you all the way down to the 1803 level. 1803 is just about, I'd say, two, three points below the one-to-one -one extension. Not a big deal did exactly what I needed to do, and now we've got the bounce, and the bounce says, having bounced to the high of 1851, that's what I said this morning to my subscribers, every day in my opening call, I give, I always show the chart that I'm, I've got right here, that is the daily E-minis, whatever month is uh, excellent, the one that we are looking at, and I show, oh, I missed something, that is not an F to B, that is an F B. Oh, no, I was correct, FB, but I missed, oh, I did it before the pop-up in the morning. So this is exactly right. So G to C, and am I favoring G or am I favoring C right now? I'm going to leave it. I'm going to actually put in an up arrow because everything technically says 91% in the stochastic, MACD is so strong. I'm, I'm expecting that we were going to get um, higher highs. How much, I really can't say. I can give you areas because what I said to subscribers this morning, I always show the E-minis and I don't give um, – I almost gave a buy signal yesterday morning early. Um, and then I just thought, you know, I don't really do it. It's not part of my modus operandi for the last 11 years with my opening call. Uh, occasionally I will do it. It was a very nice entry point, but the, the risk was still there. You saw that. That slide during the day. I just don't want to be part of that right now if I can avoid it. Um, so sometimes it can't be helped. So I don't give anything other than the parameters. And what I said on the upside was 1849s, then the 1851s, and maybe 1853s would be uh, what I'd be anticipating as resistance. On the downside was very important. 1841 is the... the, the um, 1841 is the nine-period exponential moving average. At the time, I think the Dow was at about 1848 or 1847 when I gave it out earlier this morning. So now the S&P even is only up 350, uh, 375, and it's given back a chunk of the gains. But it is really a fabulous move from off the bottom. But that's the close today is going to be so important. We've got all Fed news coming out, et cetera, et cetera. I am expecting that some of the momentum stocks are going to allow for a participation in a counter trend rally that says even if the major indexes like the Dow and the S&P have a little bit of a pullback here, that maybe the Qs that the NASDAQ, the IBB and the, and the, and the QQQ series, maybe the IWM have a bounce here because some of those stocks are just, they've been beaten down. They deserve at least a bounce and that bounce, if they all do it, or majority do it, will really give a little impetus to um, the indexes themselves. That's what I'm thinking. However, in the larger context, how we close tomorrow, Thursday, the last day of the week, is going to be really important going into the first three hours of trading on Monday. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. I suspect that we are still in a larger sell mode, but I'm, I'm allowing for flexibility in, that, in, in my opening call 
we have we have got one short that we've had for a long time, which I'm remaining short on. But all the rest we're looking at uh, long um, at longs, um, and we've raised cash, and that's just the way it has to be. Um, <clears throat> now, what's happening in the 120-minute uh, chart? I put in the G slash C. Holding very well. There's a good chance if we could pop just a little above 1851 to the 1852, 1853 area, then I think there's a bit of a rest. Will we get to the 1867.50 that was hit twice for that peak C, peak C2, uh, a high of the uh, 10th? Was that the 10th? Yeah, on the 10th? Um, I, that's a question. That really is a question. So um, let, we're done with that. Let's just run numbers. And we're going to run numbers by moving this to the side right there. Have one quick look here to see. Uh, okay, that's not showing. Okay, so maybe it is. Give me one second here. Yep, there it is. The Dow is up 72 at 16,335. The S&P is up 720 at 1850. Uh, so the S&P is up uh, quite a bit more. Seven points as opposed to the futures were only up. 3.754. Hmm, that's very interesting. All right. <laughs> Let's go on. Comp index is up 12. Oh, it's not by It should really be up 15 to up uh, even 20. It should be really strong at this point at 40.47. You've got the gold down 60 cents. Well, it took gold to quite a beating yesterday. Look at this. GCM. And then it came back a little bit. Oops, I'm in the wrong place here. All right, okay. GCM. 14. Look at that. It goes all the way back down uh, from where it came after the peak D and hitting that 200 period moving average exactly. It goes all the way down to the candle of the 4th of April, down to the 13, no, 1284.40 was the low there, and yesterday's low was um, 1284.40. It's bounced nice. It's got the characteristic of what I call a Roman candle, Chapman Wave Roman candle. Not quite. Uh, the, the close was a little bit lower. If it was the close was a little higher, that would be perfect. But it has the characteristic, and it says that at any point, if if gold starts to trade under twelve uh, ninety three, today's low is twelve ninety three. Oh, I'm having trouble with this twelve ninety three point fifty. If it closes under 12.93, there's a real good chance to test the low of yesterday, and that would be that 12.84 uh, level. The 120-minute chart has gone to peak A, peak A at 13.04.80, uh, 13.04.70, so that's still A and that's a B. So it's going to a peak B, holding okay, but this H pattern that goes to an M pattern, Got to be real careful. When the MACD and stochastic start to fail, this thing could very quickly pull back. So if, if gold doesn't buy tomorrow afternoon into Friday, because it'll be probably trading overseas, push into the 1309 to the 1311 area, back to the 200 period moving edge, but instead starts to trade below that 1293 area, I'd say be a little bit careful. It is actually holding, considering the candle yesterday, this is holding pretty darn well at this particular moment. Uh, I still have the H pattern that goes to an M pattern in the weekly chart, so that's my looking out. Now let's do a couple of other things real quickly. We want to look at uh, the TLT. Uh, uh, first of all, I must mention as I'm moving along, um, high-grade copper is actually up at 3.04. That is nice action. I, I had a question, actually I had a number of questions from from uh, subscribers and and others other people listen to TF and then saying is this is there a chance that we could in fact be looking at a brand new buy signal maybe it hasn't gone to a buy mode but is it possible and I have to tell you that with a, with an accommodating Fed it depends on what happens this afternoon an accommodating Fed can change your perspective from traditional analysis to a a pre uh, to, a, to a fixed analysis. In other words, that the Fed is there constantly trying to support the market. So all I can say is that bonds, if bonds which are trading the TLTs at 110.62, maybe making a peak E, but with still very good technicals at 90% in the stochastic, MACD good. If bonds start to go to the 111.50, 112.30 area in the TLT, 20-year T-bond fund, and the VIX, doesn't pull back. It's now at 14.99. Doesn't stay in the 14s, but instead starts to go to 15.60 or 50.70, 80, somewhere around there. 
watch out. You've got to be real careful. And you, I want you to look at this, EURUSD. This is the currency, the euro currency. Um, made it, Well, this is a counter trend rally. Um, a very strong leg E, and then it comes back to a peak E, uh, A, I'm sorry, makes a peak E back on the 10th, no, back on the 13th at 1.396. Pulls back very sharply to 1.367, and then it runs up to 1.390, oh, and now it's holding on the nine period moving average. It looks like a failure pattern at this particular point. So all I can give you are parameters. A break above the high of the 11th would be very positive. That would be at 39.06, let's call it. And a break below, not even too much lower, a break below 13.780 would be quite negative and give you that H pattern. I'm going to watch this. This is real, real interesting. So on the day... Um, the Dow is up now 91, S&P is up 912. Um, uh, let's see, we a question, uh, just one quick question. Oh, the dollar, that's right. And the dollar is holding, okay, I mean, you know, I, I'm still convinced that the Fed is just whack-a-mole, bam, 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 knocks the dollar down every time it shows any strength at all. It, ah, the dollar, I, it's just doing nothing. Um, so now let's go to our first quarter. We've got Joe in Boston. Joe, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Very well, thank you. Hey, um, I wanted to look at the XLE, and can you start off on the monthly? Because uh, we're over those highs. Yes. Now, I, I had a question about uh, the XLE last week. Someone wanted yeah. to short it, and I can't remember now whether um, that was a call or whether it was an email or both. Yeah. Um, Longer term monthly, yeah. And and what I had said at that time was, no, I, see, I still see strength in the XLE, so do not short. Now, this is going to be very interesting. If you want to make technical indicators as easy to read as ever, then the nine-period exponential moving average in the XLE, which is the S&P Select Energy Spider Fund, which is trading right now at an all-time high. Let me just double-check before I say that because there was that whole period in 2006. Let me just squeeze this. Oh, it doesn't go much beyond. Oh, it does. Yeah, wait a minute. It goes all the way to 2000. This is an all-time high. So... I got, two, I got two questions. You wanted to look at the, the monthly, and I want to just say to you, I've got an alternate count in the monthly, which says, at all, first of all, when stocks go to all-time highs or indexes go to all-time highs, the implication is that, yes, you can say there's nothing above it, and it's empty space, so it could go anywhere, but the other thing for me is to always look at the wave count, look at how it's held something like the nine period. Folks are looking at, at my charts, if you're looking at the charts, make it real easy on yourself. Always remember that the chart on the left is the daily, chart in the middle is the weekly, chart on the right is the monthly. I've just expanded this monthly so you can see all the Chapman wave notations, how many times it's gone to a peak D and turned around back in 2001, started another one, went to a peak D with an instant restart back in 2004, continued to a peak D in May of 2006, held the nine period moving average and went all the way screaming to an F. I'll be back and talk to Joe about this particular pattern, which so far is very bullish. I'll be back. Dow's up 93, and we'll be back with Joe in Boston. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. 
in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high-profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is back with another Tiger Dollar special, and as part of this promotion, not only can you receive up to a 25% bonus on whatever you spend, but you can also gain access to a five-part live webinar series with Tom O'Brien taking place the week of April 28th. Each morning during the week at 8 a.m., Tom O'Brien will walk you through how he sets up the market live and digest the previous day's trading action while analyzing overnight markets abroad in order to anticipate what kind of trading day to expect. Each 60-minute live morning webinar will be archived by around 9.30 a.m. that very morning so that if you can't attend live, it'll be available for your viewing pleasure on demand whenever you're ready. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service and they never expire. So now is a great time to lock in extra savings on all TFNN products. Don't miss out on Tom O'Brien's five-part webinar series. Get your Tiger Dollars today with up to a 25% bonus on whatever you spend before this special is over by visiting TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Basil takes your phone calls yeah. now. Toll free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven four four five one zero four four. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. We're looking at the XLE, which is the S and P Select Spider Energy Fund, and it's trading at ninety one fifty nine, up seventy three cents. Now, Joe's just asked me about the longer term aspect in the monthly chart. Well, I have a, a potential instant restart. I like to look at characteristics that appear. In fact, almost all the techniques that I've discovered, I never went looking for them. I who ever th would have thought that at, at the fourth highest peak, you get something called an instant restart. You can get a flat base restart. You can get an unconventional flat base restart, uh, etc. But what I'm looking at here is that the strength is so so good in the MACD and the stochastic at 91% and still climbing. And the weekly chart, I, I spent a little time on this. The only way I can count it is to say that, Joe, the weekly chart I have in leg C. So I'm, I have to say that I'm, I, have, I have no choice but to remain positive on the XLE. It's moving up very nicely, and that would probably include Exxon and um, uh, uh, some of the others, maybe Chevron. Um, but this is a very nice chart, trading right at the high as we speak. Um, I like it. Do you have a position? No. I just like to see when things move out to new highs and, and if you can read the tea leaves and say, you know, what is that saying? Well, well, let me just show you something here. Look, this is the IDU. I just happened to come across it last night. A lot, a lot yeah. of work with me is serendipitous because yes. I, I watch the ticker. I'm always, I've always right. been a ticker. I, yeah. I love to see the ticker go by and I see letters that I have to study. That's why I'm so upset when I lose my notations on my chart. I should have literally <laughs> thousands of charts going back. Uh, but uh, they're there somewhere in my portfolio, but they're on, uh, in my library, let's say. Now, the iShares of the U.S. utility ETF, um, also very, very strong. 
So I'm looking at this and I'm saying there is internal strength Something's within this market. Something's going on, Basil. Something underneath the surface is going on. There's absolutely, but it is because of the rotational aspect. You have to have respect for the areas that have been weak, weak, very weak, and that they could have a bit of a bounce here. That's number one. Number two, we might be looking at some areas that have had tremendous strength, and that would still include some of the momentum stocks that need more time and price on the downside. But the money, because interest rates are so low, fund managers, there are so many fund managers that are being forced to find something to put their money into that has been acting well, is looking good, and uh, XLU, XLU would be this one, uh, the same thing, but in, yeah, there you are, XLU is in leg D in the weekly. I, I have to call this uh, E slash B in the monthly chart. Um, you know, this is really good action. So I like the XLE. I, 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 I like the, um, the, the defensive area, which includes the um, X of the utilities. And I think that you could see bounces in the IBB and some of the momentum stocks. But my guess is that they're going to be coming back down a little later on and that this is just for them a retracement. So I hope that helps you. And let me I, just say to you, what, what would make me nervous about the XLE is that if this fails in leg C at an all-time high in the weekly, which it, it very seldom does, very seldom, it can, but it would be unusual then you would see the XLU within four to five weeks underneath 88, and that's the nine-period exponential moving edge. And then I'd have to say, uh-oh, failure. My guess is there will be a pullback maybe next week, and then in early May maybe we might see some kind of a top in the, uh, the uh, XLE. But so far, it's acting very nice. Thanks, Basil. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Joe. Always Goodbye. great to hear from you. Bye. And we had snow on the ground, but it's going to turn beautiful very soon, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go to Nahid. Let's go all the way down to Florida, Nahid and Safety Harbor. Nahid, how are you? Wonderful. How are you doing, Basil? I'm very well, thank you. That's great. Could you look at the IDU for me? I went short this morning, 159. Now I don't know what to think. <laughs> well, first of all, if you went short this morning at 159, I know exactly what you should be thinking. You should be thinking, not a bad move, but you're not allowed to pat yourself on the back because you know my expression. You take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself right. on the back, that's when you hit the tree. <laughs> but... Right. You know how I love to talk about the H pattern in the Chapman wave that turns out right. into it goes into an M pattern. If it makes a lower low and closes at that lower low, it should have a rally that should not surpass the previous arch high. In this case, by you trading now, I'm going to mention what the price is, trading at 155.10, so that's four points lower than where you shorted it, um, has done that once. It did that when it went to the low of, uh, if I can read, 140.66 140 on the uh, 7th, and then it ran up, failed to make a new recovery high, but it did go to 159.81. Then it pulls back, and now it's having a bounce, and that high today is 159.50. So it's gone a penny above. Uh, is that right? 159.81. No, it hasn't broken. Oh, this is great. I'll be right back, folks. We're looking at Baidu, and we're looking at Nahidu Short. I'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
And the Hex powerful weekly newsletter, the Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chap with Tiger Technicians Hour, and there are a couple of things I want to look at. One is the 120-minute chart for Nahid. We were looking at Baidu. It's trading at 155.52. Um, it's gone to a peak C. But the failure pattern, this candle, once again, this is a Roman, a Chapman Wave Roman candle. Uh, if, if in fact, at any point in the next three hours, uh, Baidu starts, instead of trading back to about 156.85, 157.10, um, it starts to slide, and it goes anywhere close to 153.70 to 153, yep, 153.70, there's a real good chance that it's going to be a failure pattern that's going to pull back quite sharply. So that's what I'd be looking at. But now, are you? Are, do you? It's this time. Are you short? Or are you using uh, put? No, I'm short this time. Yeah, if you're short, then here's my recommendation. The way Baidu is acting, that pattern that goes from an H to an M pattern. The way you remember what I spoke about, the right side of the uh, pattern that I drawn. In fact, I meant to. Um, follow it up a little bit more it the pattern that i was looking at that i said in the weekly that it should test the left side low bar and i think i I'd, I'd mentioned the price was 140 141.52 the low of um the 11th of the week of 11th of october of last year but in fact it was the candle uh 141.29 the candle of the 20th of September, the week of the 20th of September, that was the target and it went below it. That's saying to me, based on the stochastic at 17%, attempting to rally but not really showing any strength at all, and the MACD is still weak, 
that the nine period moving average of 157 is going to be really, really important. If it, if it takes it out and closes above that at any point in the next week, then I have to admit that it's got a little more strength than I was anticipating, and it could be making the right shoulder of a head and shoulders pattern. What I'm looking at right now, the fact that it went to a high, it actually, I think it, it must have opened, it gapped up. It opened yeah. at, uh, yeah, it gapped up. Yeah. So it opens at 159.38 and then fails. Is this telling me that there's, there's very little internal strength? That I, you remember, I've had a trouble with the with the weekly chart. Although in another way of counting it, it's an unconventional flat base restart that went to D. But I'm going to just leave that alone. I'm going to treat the the monthly as if it's going to be the one aberration in my work that does actually go to a C and then a C minus in a monthly chart. Um, I'm thinking that this is not good action at all. That you've got a great position. All I would say to you is. If you got in at 159, it's really not fun to give up gains. But at the same time, if this is going to make that H pattern that turns into an M pattern, I would just say to you that a, a move above today's high would say that it's going to retest the high of 163.58, the high of the, uh, the the week of the of the second of April. That's that's my only caution. I think you got a great entry. I think you you're doing well. Um, I would just say maybe one part of it should have a, a stop, a buy stop, around about that 157.50 area. So that at least you take a couple of points profit. You can always reshort it if, if it starts to pull back after that instead of going higher. I think you got yourself a great trade. What it's saying is I'm in a trading range and I'm going to be stuck between the 159, 50, 159 to 162, 63 area for a while as, as resistance. And I probably keep coming down to the 146 to 143 area with a real good chance that I'll test the 140.66 low of the 7th. And that's the trading band I'll be in until I decisively break one of those parameters. And my eye says there's a good chance that one of those parameters will be the low side over the coming three to four weeks. So I think you've got a good, you've got a good trade now. The difficulty is in this market, if we see the rotation that allows some of the momentum stocks to rally, it means that Baidu might be stuck a little bit in, this, in a bit of a trading range, just for a, a smaller trading range for now, to 157.50 and 153.30 until it really makes its mind up. But the way it's looking, I think that you, you're in the right direction. Hope that helps you. Yes, thank you so much. If you have a chance, please look at um, TWTR. I'm thinking about doing a call, but thank you so much. All right. I will look at that uh, soon. I want you to do a couple of other things first. Thank you so much for calling now here. Thank you so, very much. Bye-bye. So folks, what I wanted to do in this particular period is that um, – I want you to look at just a couple of, well, I, you know what, I've got Twitter up right now. Uh, Twitter has tested so far successively in an H pattern. It comes out um, back in November. It has a high of 50.09, and it closes at 41.65, goes even lower, and it goes down to 30. Uh, 38.80, the week of the 29th of November. Then it skyrockets. It just gets everybody says, oh, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. And it Twitter's up. It flitters up, actually, all the way to 74.73, the week of the 27th of December. Unfortunately, there's no veracity. There's, there, there's no underpinning of strength. And what does it do? It comes sailing all the way down, makes the H pattern perfectly peak A minus. I'll put that in over here. An A minus at the top. Right there. A minus. Another A minus. And then it comes down. Doesn't even make an A minus there. It just comes all the way down and then and makes a low five days, one, two, three, four days ago. And where does it make the low? It goes to thirty nine point sixty eight, a point just over a point above its all time low. Well, now it's acting quite well. The candle we're looking at intraday so far is what I call that Roman candle, uh, Chapman Wave Roman candle. Oh, I, what I forgot to mention to Nahid is that when you have Roman candles at lows after a pretty serious uh, decline, a close above the Roman candle high allows for further upside action. So just keep that in mind. I meant to mention that, and then I just uh, overlooked it. So here it's at a low uh, in the daily chart, and it says that if Twitter – 
is able, well, we, the, the day isn't close, so we don't even know what that candle is going to be like. But if Twitter, yesterday's high in Twitter was 45.55, today's high is 45.56. So that allows me, that one penny allows me to go P, uh, leg A right here and to say that the stochastic has gone from in the single digits. No, let me check. It might have been the teens. Uh, right there. Uh, so it allows it to go, oh, teens, what? It's slow. It goes 5%. It goes from the 5% area to 27% with a, it's got to be with a commensurate move in the in the price. And there was a, yesterday a fabulous move in Twitter. Now, I I don't know anything about the fundamentals. I don't do Twitter. So all I'm going to say is I think that Twitter has the potential to go to the doji candle high of 46.18 to 46.43, that was the candle of the 1st of April with the one the day before, a little higher, on the 31st. It has that potential. If it even gets close to the 45, 40, 47 area, then 48.94 is, an, is a 200 period exponential moving average. So now if you're talking a call position and I hear that's a little different to if you were long. So if you were if you were along, um, I'd have a completely different plan because it's a call position. I'm going to say to you that if Twitter takes out 43.39 is the nine period moving average, it's trading at 44.55 TWTR. But if it takes out that low in the next by Tuesday of next week, if you are in a call position, I would just say either get out of the call position. Do not increase your your uh, increase your uh, uh, position at all, and if there is a chance that it holds that level forty three thirty nine and then bounces back, that'll be the first real sign of strength. If we can get back to forty four fifty, or preferably a new recovery high, then that position's fabulous. But if it starts to fail, it makes its single leg a up, which I think is a lot more likely. Um, if there's weakness, if today it closes under. 40, where, where it is now, 44.46, if it closes under 44.46 and then has a weak session Thursday, I, I'd be a little careful about a call position. I don't want to tell you not to do it because you have a real good eye. I'm just saying my parameter is that 43. If it closes under 43, it's kind of given back way too much. That's I wanted to say that. i got Brent in uh, Martinez, California. Brent, hi, how are you? I'm doing very well, Basil. How about yourself? I'm doing very well, thank you. You'd like to look at? Actually, I'm doing even better because I'm expecting my grandchildren to arrive uh, in another couple of hours, and that'll be a lot of fun. That sounds great. I was calling about sugar today. I know you had talked to uh, John and, and Billy earlier in the week about it, and it looks like today, I know one day doesn't make a market, but there seems to be a decent move to the upside today. Yes. I to see if that, so, that the charts. Let, let me just go to this particular, and what I had said to John was, if it closes below the left side, folks, we're looking, I'm looking right just for the moment at the continuous contract, but I said if it closes under the low of the 24th of March, which was at 1667, it has that day, but no more than one day, to scream back into the arch formation. And if it does that, oh, whoops, if it does that, then the level I'd be looking at would be, um, it must get back above 1667. And then if it does that, the left side arch high, which in this case, uh, no, the left side closest peak that you want to look at for the target would be 1734. And that's the high of the ninth. I had said to him at that time, that was two, uh, two days, one, two, three days ago, that I probably would not be having a position. I thought it was going to go lower. It wasn't at that low at the time. It did go lower, and it went lower yesterday, and I believe he got in, and he got into a fabulous position because it is soaring right now. It's up 3.8%. This is the continuous contract. Are you looking at the K? Is that what you'd be trading? I'm I think so. Okay. Here's the May uh, contract, right? So the May contract yeah, did exa that's exactly the pattern you want to see. No more than one session, 
underneath and the second session, well, it didn't do it. It did it on the third session, but the second session made a lower low and then closed above the previous day's low. That was good. Today is really an excellent session. Now, because it's such a good session, the day is young and we don't know where it's going to close. Do you have a position at all? Yeah, I'm, I'm using the SGG, which is uh, it's, uh, Correct. Okay. ETN on the sugar. Yeah, now, one thing about the SGG, I've not traded, I keep meaning to, just as an experiment, um, it doesn't have all that much volume. You almost have to book an appointment to get the volume there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that's, uh, you know, let me just tell you my thoughts on the ETNs or the ETFs. If you are, um, if you are trading a particular uh, root position, I have no qualms at all, regardless of how. I, I know that you've had some fab we've had some fabulous shows with Andy Hecht talking about the veracity, the strength, the underlying, the underpinning, uh, all the fundamentals of many of these, most of the ETFs and ETNs, and it was, I, I heard it, uh, quite a bit of the program, very, very, uh, very articulate, very good. I, I thought it was fabulous. I find, for the couple of times I have traded in, in, the, in the sectors that have this kind of commodity ETM, um, that if the, if the price of your fundamental is doing exactly what you want, this, regardless of volume, this will probably travel in the same direction. You're, you've probably found that the biggest issue here is let's imagine that tomorrow, overnight, into tomorrow before 9.30, sugar is not only given back, but it's gone underneath the low of yesterday. Just imagine for, for, for just this demonstrative purposes. That means, number one, you can't, so, I don't know if you can trade your ETN overnight. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. That's number one. Number two is you will not get your best price if there were a million shares being traded, whereas if there were only 5,000 shares, you could have a fabulous exit, but it might be not be implemented the way you like. That's really the issue. When there's low volume, getting out, Getting in is never, well, sometimes it's a problem, but most of the time it's not a problem. They like for you to get in. It's getting out that is just horrible, and that's really the only issue that I wanted to mention. So you are in the SGG, which is the IPATH Dow Jones AIG Sugar ETN. That's the note, not the, not the uh, uh, ETF, um, not the fund. That means that it's above the nine-period exponential moving average. The MACD hasn't turned positive, but it turned up. The stochastic has turned cross positive. Now, let me explain what I look at. In this case, you've got an arch formation with uh, a break below the left side low, but the SGG didn't close below the left side low. In this case, it's the low of um, the low of the 24th of March at 55.03, and it closed at the low that day. But yesterday's low was 54.85 and then it closed at 55.03 at the exact same price. It didn't close below. That's a positive. Next is it should trade above, oh, it should try to test the 50, 57.66 high of the fourth. If it closes above that, 58.24 is your 200 period exponential moving average. If it closes above that, not only is it very positive, it says I am definitely going to make my best attempt to trade towards the 58, 50, 86 high of the 28th of March. So I think you're in a good position. I would just say, have a stop that's reasonable, but I... You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at DFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability. Available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. I just wanted to tell uh, Brent. Brent, you're still there? Uh, if you are, just say yeah. hi. Uh, Brent, yes, I just I wanted to tell you. You're there. Brent, I wanted to tell you that the 56, um, around about 56.90, is the 200-period exponential moving average support in the SGG in the IPATH uh, Sugar ETN, and 5614 is the nine-period exponential moving average um, support. So those, those are the parameters that if there's any pullback, it should hold within there. But really what you want to see for uh, upside um, strength to, uh, to continue is, is for this pattern that I, I love to look at, for the H pattern to turn into a very successful, I'm drawing it right now, cup formation and what that says that there shouldn't be more than a day of just a minor pullback and then you want to break out and you want to definitely go above the 56 57 66 high of the fourth 
that'll be very positive action because it'll form that cup formation and say, no, you're not just going to the left side peak. Uh, uh, um, well, you've already broken one on the left side, but that major peak that I'm looking at, but you're going to go to the peak that was on the 28th. So I hope that helps you. It does very much so, Basil. I'm sure you're, I know you're kind of running short on time, but if you had any time left to look at Priceline, I have calls on that I bought yesterday at the low, so. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to be doing Larry's show. Yeah. I'm going to be looking at uh, a couple of uh, very important stocks during Larry's show, and I'm going to try to give an overview for the weekend into uh, into Monday. So uh, maybe I can do it then. Right now I'm going to okay. do a little wrap on what I'm looking at for those folks who listen to my hour. So thank you so much for calling, and I will get to it. I've written it down, Priceline. So here we are. We've had a number of questions in the den, folks. I will get to those questions, but I'm going to do it in the next hour. Let me just do a couple of things that I think are absolutely imperative in this particular market right now in the Dow this is a beautiful candle it's a kind of candle that you don't find very often in a retracement failure mode which I was suspecting that we were in but fortunately uh, we're looking in my opening call at, at, at long side positions I'm looking at mostly long positions we've kept that major short from way back, I want to keep it as long as I can. But this is a leg, gray leg A, and it's really important. I'll explain why. Because if the Dow takes out 16,456, that was the high that started the A to B equals C to D in the Chapman Wave one-to-one uh, -one extension pattern, time and price pattern, that says... Be careful because the weekly chart will automatically start to improve. I've already got the weekly chart, and the day is young, and the week is young. We've still got a whole one and a half days to go. That, down, that downtrend line that I drew as a potential has been pierced to the upside. So don't get, and the stochastic's holding flat at 74%, and the MACD is flat, negative but flat, which maintains the last major signal. And in this case, we don't know if that's a, a peak E or a B at the top. Um, and the monthly chart is looking to say, hey, I don't even know what you guys are fussing about. I'm, I'm sitting in the sell zone, but I haven't sold off yet. So the parameters to watch are real simple. If by Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock, the Dow is given back a big chunk from this afternoon. It turns around and goes down again with no re retracement as we've seen for two days. Instead, it takes out all the gains of the day and closes under 16,280. That'll be a very negative. That'll say, yes, this is just a counter trend, counter trend bounce. It's pretty much done for now. Even the IBB will fail very soon. I'm not looking at that. I think that the IBB and the, um, the, 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 the NASDAQ is telling us there's a rotation going on in the form of weak ones, and they are going to they're going to rally quite nicely. That's number one. That's what it looks like at this particular point. Most importantly, it's the VIX index. I, mean, I harp on this for years now. It is at 1462. It's showing buying pressure. So if the VIX suddenly in the next day or two pushes above 1520 into the 1530, 1540 area, this market is coming back down. But if it holds here. You can have the, the upside move. I'll be back to do Larry Pesavento show straight off of this. Great uh, to see. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This is TFNN.